From radio waves to near-miss asteroids, all the way to galaxies smashing into each other and hurling black holes through space-time. Yeah, space is terrifying, and this list is definitely not going to convince you otherwise. Let's dive right into the top 10 bizarre outer space mysteries we should definitely fear. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have radio waves. Every day, thousands of times a day, Earth receives signals that come from outer space by way of radio waves. These radio waves come in super fast bursts that are only a few thousandths of a second long, so this may not seem like much, and we could just kind of chalk it up to some weird space thing we don't quite understand, but the weirdest part that makes it all the more intriguing is that some of them appear to repeat. One important clue about these bursts is in how they arrive. Higher frequency radio waves appear first, and then they are followed by ones with a lower frequency in a sort of falling or cascading effect. This is likely what is known as the propagation effect, which means that the original event, whatever is causing these radio signals to be sent out in the first place, emits all the signals at once, but the lower frequency ones travel at a slower pace just slightly, slightly slower than the higher ones, thus we have this delayed arrival to Earth. If this is the case, this means that wherever the signals are coming from is very, very far away. This is because it would take quite a significant amount of time for this effect to show up as clearly as it does on our telescopes, and if that's the case, and we are still able to detect them after all of those intervening millions of years of travel through space, then they must have started out as very, very bright. This was a really long way of saying, hey, we get these radio bursts every single day and we have no idea what they are or where they come from, but they just might be millions of years old. Theories as to what could be causing the waves ranges from exploding stars to colliding neutron stars or comets smashing into neutron stars or maybe something I'll absolutely never understand like evaporating black holes or quote, oscillating primordial cosmic strings. In our number nine spot today, we have the origins of life. Where did life originate from? I know many people have their own theories and beliefs, and I'm not here to discredit or judge any of those, I'm just here to say that we have no evidence to prove anyone's theory. We simply just don't know, so at this point, your guess is as good as mine. Many people choose to believe that life began here on Earth, especially considering we have no evidence of life existing anywhere else in the parts of the universe that we've observed, but scientists aren't quite convinced. It's very true that life could have begun somewhere else and ended up being brought to Earth on a meteorite or perhaps some other sort of cosmic collision is what landed life here. Scientists aren't even exactly sure which area of science would be able to find these answers, and even if they could agree, who knows where we should even start looking. The only reason this mystery gets a little eerie is, since we don't know where life began or how it originated, who knows exactly who or what else is out there in terms of life forms. This is exactly what leads us into our next point. In our number 8 spot today we have, where is everybody? Perhaps one of the biggest space mysteries out there is, are we alone in the universe? Are we the only only intelligent life that exists? Where the heck is everyone else? We can all hypothesize and make educated guesses, but at the end of the day, no one really knows because to know, you have to have proof and evidence. There are many, many theories as to why we haven't found any extraterrestrial friends yet, and they range from the belief that we are the only intelligent life in the universe, to the belief that we are a nursery planet right now that is protected from other advanced civilizations so as to not disrupt our development. I love this idea, we just have an alien babysitter, what is that? A weirdly comforting thought. Despite all these theories, at the end of the day we don't know where aliens are or if they exist at all. A Pennsylvania State University team that was being led by Dr. Jason Wright made an astonishing point, however, when they said that there is no mystery, we have searched only a fraction of the galaxy equivalent to the water in a hot tub compared to all of Earth's oceans. This is certainly something to consider. As Douglas Adams puts it, quote, space is big. You won't believe just how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. In our number seven spot today, we have dark energy. Astronomer Edwin Hubble, whom the Hubble telescope is obviously named, named after, in the 1920s made the discovery that the universe is not static and in fact it is actually expanding. He was studying a supernova when he realized that the universe was not only expanding, but was expanding at a much higher rate now than it was a long time ago. This discovery was groundbreaking because prior to it, scientists believed that the gravity of matter would end up at least slowing the expansion of the universe, if not causing it to contract on itself. Since this switched up everyone's way of thinking so much, there then began to 
be the debated topic of dark energy. This is the idea that there is this like inexplicable force that is pulling all of the cosmos apart at speeds that are only increasing. Dark energy is said to make up 73% of the universe, but we still haven't been able to pin it down and directly detect it. Basically what I'm saying is that we're pretty sure it's there, but we have no idea what it is despite it making up such a large portion of our universe. So that's just a little terrifying. In our number six spot today, we have dark matter. Okay, if dark energy and all the mysteries it holds weren't enough, now we've got dark matter to talk about, and I'm sorry, but there's just no more answers with this one. In the 1960s and the 1970s, scientists began to hypothesize that there might be more mass in the universe than we can see. After this, an astronomer at the Carnegie Institute of Washington named Vera Rubin was studying the speeds of stars at different locations within galaxies. What she found was that there was essentially no difference in the velocity of the stars, whether they were closer to the center of the galaxy or further out. This was an interesting discovery because that defied the most basic laws of physics, right? Like applying what we knew at that point, it would have made more sense for the stars on the outskirts of the galaxy to orbit more slowly than those at the center. In order to explain this, astronomers began discussing the phenomena of dark matter. It can't be seen, but it has a mass, which is how it is able to be detected because it exerts some sort of gravitational pull on regular matter. Dark matter makes up 23% of the universe, and if you remember, dark energy accounts for 73%, so that leaves us with a whole whopping 4% of matter that we understand better and know more about, which is things like humans, planets, stars, that sort of thing. The other 96% of what the universe is made of is one of space's greatest mysteries that uh, we just can't seem to figure out yet. So, I don't know. I'm scared. In our number five spot today, we have the galactic recoil. One of the galaxies that sits closest to us here in the Milky Way is the galaxy we refer to as the Andromeda Galaxy, and within it, we have found this strangely shaped cluster of stars that has been stumping researchers for quite a while. Recently, it is possible that a newer theory might have actually found an answer to this mystery, but the answer is more terrifying than the mystery itself. This question has been around for decades, and this new research might also help researchers to better understand how how galaxies grow by feeding on each other. Basically, every galaxy has a supermassive black hole at their center. I know, it's terrifying, but it's just the way it is and there's nothing we can do about it. So this new study is showing that when two galaxies collide, which yes, also unfortunately happens, the supermassive black holes and their cores then release a huge, devastating, powerful kickback. It's like the recoil from a shotgun. This new study and research is now showing and suggesting that this kickback may be so strong that it can knock millions of stars into like different wonky, strange orbits and then that would be the answer as to why this star cluster behaves so strangely. Basically, the collision and the waves won't affect the stars in the galaxy directly, but then the recoil is going to throw the remaining supermassive black hole through space. And when I say throw, I'm talking about this black hole traveling at millions of miles per hour. And we also have to remember that supermassive black holes have a mass that can be millions and even billions times that of the sun. This means that the kickback could be powerful enough for them to entirely escape the galaxy. And if they don't, they may pull the orbit of the stars around them, thus creating this wonky situation we've been wondering about. Of course, that was the most basic way of explaining it because, I mean, I'm not an expert, I'm a YouTuber, but uh, it's crazy. In our number four spot today, we have asteroids. Every year, this is a prediction that comes up, and it's the sort of cosmic event that makes people believe that this is the year an apocalypse inducing asteroid is going to collide with Earth. Of course, scientists work diligently to detect anything that might be on a path to Earth and might threaten our wonderful planet, but like anything, sometimes things slip through and we get a frightening surprise, like what happened just a few years ago. On August 16th, 2020, just after midnight in Eastern US time, a small asteroid buzzed past our planet just 2,950 kilometers above Earth's surface. That may seem like a far way away, but in terms of asteroids, that is a miss that is too close for comfort. Here's the worst part. The asteroid was only discovered a few hours after it made its close approach to Earth. Earth. The good news is that this is because of the size, because it wasn't a relatively huge one, and if it hadn't have missed and ended up colliding with Earth, it either would have broken up in the atmosphere or it wouldn't have been super catastrophic world ending sort of a thing. What I'm trying to say is that while it is something we are tracking and keeping tabs on, there's a lot of sky and space to cover and you never know what might slip through the cracks. In our number three spot today, we have Bye Bye Galaxies. Okay, did you know that galaxies can die? I didn't until I learned about this. 
It is said that the universe is about 13.8 billion years old. When it was just a youngster at only 3 billion years old, it was going through an extremely important period in its development, and this was the most prolific period of star birth in its entire history. New research from NASA using the Hubble Space Telescope, along with the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array in northern Chile, they gazed towards the cosmic objects in this period, and that is when they found something that hadn't been seen before. Six different dead galaxies. By this, I mean that they had run out of the cold hydrogen needed to make stars, and without the fuel for stars, these galaxies were basically running on empty. At this point in our universe, all of the galaxies should have been forming tons of stars. I mean, ours certainly was, as can be seen by a glance towards the night sky, especially in areas that aren't clouded by light pollution. This discovery is absolutely fascinating, but it's led us to a new question we didn't even know we had before. What led these galaxies to this point, and what happened to all of the cold gas in them so early on? On. The six galaxies lived fast, hot lives, but we aren't sure what went wrong. Lead author and assistant professor of astronomy at the University of Massachusetts, Amherst, Kate Whitaker, proposed several potential explanations and gave us insight into the future of the studies when she said, quote, Did a supermassive black hole in the galaxy center turn on and heat up all of the gas? If so, the gas could still be there, but now it's hot. Or it could have been expelled and now it's being prevented from accreting back into the galaxy. Or did the galaxy just use it all up and the supply is cut off. The questions really are endless, and it's unclear whether we'll ever know the answers for sure or not. In our number two spot today, we have how big is the universe? Okay, so we have our sun, which is a star that is surrounded by, we'll say, nine planets, and that makes up our solar system. Our solar system is located within the Milky Way galaxy, and it is currently believed that there are about 100 to 400 billion stars within our galaxy, and at least that many planets, but likely more. That's a lot of planets and stars floating around in our galaxy alone, but that's not it. In our observable universe, the things we can tangibly see, there are about 150 billion other galaxies. And that's just what we can see. That number could technically go on for, well, that's exactly the thing. We don't know how much that number could grow, but it's theorized that the number is 250 times higher than the 150 billion that we can see. That's an incomprehensible amount. And that's just galaxies. When we take that knowledge and apply it to how many solar systems that would mean and how many planets, I can totally understand why we may never know for sure just how big the universe is, but it really does have this ability to make you feel exceptionally small. This coupled with the theories of how the universe is infinite and always expanding and things get even more convoluted. Just trying to wrap my head around it is a struggle in itself. In our number one spot today we have, how will the universe end? Perhaps a morbid question, but it's a good one. I mean, all good things must come to an end, and that might include the universe itself, but maybe it doesn't. I mean, we don't know. That's the whole point of this video. There are theories such as the Big Crunch, which suggests that the expansion of the universe, which has been ongoing since the Big Bang, will eventually slow to a stop, and then the universe will give way to the force of gravity, essentially just pulling everything, planets, galaxies, it all, into a single dense point until everything is just wiped out. There are other theories out there, such as the Big Freeze, the Big Bounce, or the Big Rip, which sounds the most terrifying of them all, although I'm not particularly interested in any of the options so far. The good news is that this is all billions and billions of years away, so we won't be around to find out regardless, but when it does happen, it'll be a pretty spectacular event. All right, guys, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for checking out this video. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozolowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.